What's up, everyone? This is Your Yes is Needed. I believe it's episode eight. And today's topic, I want to go jump right into self-sabotaging. So when I talk, I haven't really talked about how I lost the weight. I talk about mindset a lot for a reason. But, and I'll share that reason with the process that I learned. So I tell folks lately, I've been having this conversation with people lately, and they're like, oh, how'd you lose that weight? And I tell folks, yo, losing the weight is easy. Keeping it off is hard. They're like, oh, that's not true, blah, blah, blah. And then, so I had to remind myself, I had to like relive 2018 when I first started. And it was hard. It was hard creating the, recreating a habit. Um, obviously it's my new habit now that I have upkept for over three years I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's not as hard as when I first started. So one of the reasons I'm talking about self-sabotage is because I have witnessed and I have learned along the way that self-sabotaging is a real thing. And it's the reason why most people quit all the time or they stop or they're, they just don't find the motivation. So when I first started losing weight, and I'm going to be real, this is how I talked to myself when I first started losing weight. I did hire someone, I did pay someone. And so paying someone pushed me because I was like, I'm not going to lose my money. And this is one of the reasons why I say free is hard. You have nothing to lose. So everyone that comes to my camp and on my team that show up, I tell them, yo, you guys are doing the hardest thing. Showing up when you have nothing to lose is hard and so i always commend them for that so one of the things that pushed me was like i paid no nah, bro i'm going to show up another thing i kept doing was anytime i would lay down and just wanted to sleep and i would be like you're fat get up i would say that to myself all the time because i knew how lazy i can get and I needed to break the habit of the laziness that it created for all those years. I always had excuses. I always had reasons to stay broken. My back, my knees, my feet hurt. I can't even walk. My knees really are really bad. I mean, I, I said it all. And so I would always have a reason not to do something for myself, but I made it to work. I knew how to work seven days out of the week. I knew how to work overtime. I knew how to go to school right after work. I would, but anytime it took care of myself, oh, I don't have time. So I learned that I self-sabotaged myself with, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I self-sabotaged myself with the, I chased titles for a long time. I chased the image of success more than anything that had to do with me. And this is why I don't like titles to this day, because I chased it for so long. If you go to my Instagram, it says I professionally make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches without being disappointed because I don't want the title. I overworked myself to hell chasing titles. Chase, I was such a big hustler. I chased money. I chased the look of success. I chased a hardworking image and I don't want it. I just don't care for it. Everything I do now is the complete opposite of what I believed in or what I chased and I worked for and I fell apart doing it. And everything the, I do the opposite, I have gained so much peace and I'm in the best shape of my life because of it, which blows my own mind. So. I have, I know why people have a hard time believing me because it's me and I have a hard time believing me. So that's why I don't like titles. I don't talk shit about people that have titles. If you want to call yourself an author, a coach, a trainer, like, that's fine. I, people call me coach. People call me auntie. They call me trainer. They call me everything. And that's fine. I know I'm a coach. I know I'm a trainer. I know I'm um, uh, an author. I know I'm all these other things, but it's just for me to know, all right, cool. But I'm always going to have that I make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches without being disappointed in my bio. <laughs> so it's been like that for three years. 
And I'm very, very careful that I don't tap into my ego. And that's one of the things that I, I'm very careful of because I wanted the image of success so bad. I fed my ego and I created an image that I was more worried about protecting than who I really was. <laughs> Let me say that again, because I was pretty good. <laughs> I created this image of who I was supposed to be and I protected that image. I protected that dysfunction and forgot who I really was. And so that's why if you also go through my social media, this is why I call myself out because I don't wanna go through that no more. I like this process of purging. Even if it hurts, I don't care. Even if it hurts my pride and my ego, I don't care. I rather bruise it, I rather hurt it. I rather react to it and just suffer a little bit then protect it it's not worth it to me no more i don't like that person i don't like where that person went so if you're protecting an image because you 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 told everyone this is how you are this is who you are then it's only going to last for so long you will die disappointed and I think that's the worst feeling in the world. Nothing's worse when you finally get to a place where you think you're winning and it tastes like bland. It tastes like nothing. There's no feeling or emotion behind it. You're just looking for the next thing. And you're like, well, maybe that's not it. Maybe it's here. So it's very, very important that you celebrate every single victory. Because if you don't celebrate every single victory, you're not going to know what victory looks like. I lost 135 pounds and I, I, I'm very grateful that I was able to do it naturally. I'm very grateful that I'm physically able to do so. I'm very grateful that I have the mindset that I do to be able to get there. And so if I'm always like, oh, I, I gained five pounds, like I'm tapping into a defeated mindset instead of reminding myself who I am, how to get back to where I need to be. Now, in bodybuilding competition, I gain weight very, very easily. And thank God I don't torture myself with how much, I can gain up to 25 pounds in two, three weeks after competing. And I just know that a lot of it's water weight and I just don't torture myself with the weight gain. I'm like, oh, good Lord, I'm thick. But to have the insecurity that weight gain is a bad thing is not true. Like, I like having weight on me. <laughs> I got to the lowest I did. Thank you. I flexed on stage. Now it's time to eat ice cream. I like the ice cream. I like the pizza. So you have to really narrow down why do you want to lose weight? And it sounds crazy. But most people don't know why they want to lose weight. So you hear a lot of people say, oh, I want to do it because I want to get healthier. But then they're waiting for something. They're, they're waiting for a Monday. They're waiting for a trainer. They're waiting instead of just stepping outside to go for a walk. They're just waiting. So you have to ask yourself, is your health motivating you to move or are you just using that and telling yourself that you need this or do you want to so that's really important that you identify what you want and what you need when I was told that if I don't make a lifestyle change that I'm going to decline even more that didn't move me that not that did not move me not one bit it wasn't until I started getting to get rid of the weight around me, AKA people, that I started losing the weight. And so that's how I started losing weight. I started getting rid of people. And so if you think that your current lifestyle, your current crowd, your current is going to, the, your current mindset is going to give you the push that you need to get to the next level, then you really need to ask yourself, are you fooling the people around you? Or are you fooling yourself? So 
if you are doing the same thing every single day and you think that you're just one day going to wake up and go, ha, I'm going to start doing this. I hope so. And I hope that it lasts. But realistically, if you don't have a reason why, the environment that you stick around with, the mindset that you've been constantly listening and entertained to is going to suck you right back in. So you have to create the mindset of what and who you want to become. I listen to audiobooks every single day. It helps with my cardio. And I love listening to people and their overcoming stories because I want to know how you overcame it so that I can adapt it one day. And so I don't watch TV. It's very, very rare, maybe Super Bowl, but it's very rare that I watch TV because it's something that you can turn off and on when you're, when you're flooding with mind you're flooding your mind with things that that don't feed you and so when you start making good changes in your life you're going to notice two things you're going to feel good about yourself and the second thing is you're going to make people around you uncomfortable because you're the one that's changing and not them so my biggest pet peeve is when I hear people say, you know what they're saying about you? You know what they're saying? That is the most spineless, cowardice thing that I hear. I hate that. I, I, you, I was told that for years and I just despise it so much. It's such a coward thing to say. Like, how come you just can't say, you know what I don't like? So when you have to use the word day, it's like you have to recruit people. And so not only do people put that in your ear, but then you have to almost overcome everything that you have adapted over the years. You have to change your mindset. You have to change your habits. You have to change your behaviors. And that's not easy. So, but it's possible. Yeah, the people around you suck. They're going to start sucking pretty soon. There are some supporters, but one day you're going to really, really find out that your circle is going to come smaller and smaller. The more things you do for yourself, the, the, if your intentions are good, let me add that in there. If your intentions are good and it has purpose, the right people will come in your life. I promise you, it works out that way. But you have to get rid of a lot of people that don't wanna see you win, but they love to see where you're at currently. So I talked about this in one of my podcasts is that sobriety felt like rejection to me because I was always a phone call away. And so when I became sober, it felt like being a loser because my phone stopped ringing. You're no longer the go-to person. You're just like this, oh, well, you used to hang out with us. Now you're sober and you're no longer fun. So that took a while to accept. I used to have such a busy mindset. I needed to keep busy all the time. And if I was busy, I didn't care for your invitations. And so, but getting busy and staying busy all the time just to be busy was exhausting. And eventually you're going to burn out. And so it's a beautiful thing to be sober. It's a beautiful, and it's, it's one of the most, one of my most successful stories that I have, like losing the weight is not one of my most successful stories. It's what you can see visibly. Being sober is my greatest testimony. It's my greatest trophy. It is my greatest success story. But no one knows that because they don't see sobriety, me carrying sobriety, even though I looked old as hell when I was drinking. And I look so much younger now. <laughs> so, but if you didn't know from before, all you can see is how much weight I lost. You don't see nothing about my sobriety. You didn't know that I used to wake up in parks or that I had to be carried all the time or I constantly got black. I was constantly blacking out or they had to slap my face at the psych ward because I was so drugged up and drunk. So no one knows about that. They just know about my weight loss story. So everyone asks me questions about how did you lose weight? Well, this is how it started. I gave up the hardest thing for 45 days. 
And for 45 days, I gave up alcohol because I thought it was impossible because one, I needed to see if I was a drunk or not. So I gave up alcohol. After realizing that I could do the hardest thing, I realized I could do anything else. So I joined a gym. I lost 15 pounds from not eating, not drinking alcohol, eating fast food and soda for 45 days. I lost 15 pounds. I was like, holy smokes. I lost weight just by doing nothing? Interesting. Well, what happens if I join a gym? That's how it all started. And my next step was I created a chart. I wanted to lose 100 pounds. So instead of saying I need to lose 100 pounds, I said I only need to lose 25 pounds. So I broke up my weight by four. I took up, well, I started off at 284. And my first goal, so let me see, so 284 minus 25. So my first goal was to reach 259 pounds. So it wasn't 184. That seemed too far. I allowed a gap of excuses when I put something that seemed impossible for me. I needed to have a realistic goal at my level of where I was mentally. So a lot of people ask me, is this realistic? It depends. Is it realistic for you? Because I believe in the supernatural. I believe in the unrealistic. I believe in the impossible. But do you? So I needed to break down my 100 pounds by 25 pounds. I did not care about the 184. I care only about 259 pounds. That's it. So as soon as I reached 259 pounds, I checked the box off. Ah, my first goal is done. My second goal, another 25 pounds. So the next goal was 234 pounds. As soon as I checked out the 235 pounds, that's 50 pounds there. And I go, huh, okay. I did not look at the, the end goal. I only looked at my next goal. So that's why I say, if you don't celebrate every single victory, you're always going to feel like a loser. I did not look at the end goal. I only looked at the next goal. So I put minus 25 pounds again. Ha! Huh. All right. My next goal is 209. I did not care about the long-term goal. I only care about the short-term goal. So as soon as I reached 209 pounds, I lost 75 pounds total by losing 25 at a time. So when you allow unrealistic goals that you, the level that you're at, then you're allowing gaps. Your, your, your diet's going to be lazier. Your workout's going to be lazier because you're going to tell yourself that you have time. You're like, oh, it's just so far away. This is fine. But if you tighten it up a little bit, then it's not, it's not, so, it's not so bad. You're like, oh, wait, I'm like five pounds away from my second goal. No, you know what? I'm going to go for a walk today. And I would have that conversation with myself. I was obsessed with every single victory, every little thing. Every little thing was everything to me. So it's, it's if you don't grab a hold of your victories, you're just self-sabotaging yourself. Okay. You're just, you're cutting yourself short but not realizing the full potential that you can possibly have by how you talk to yourself. If you talk to yourself down, do you think you're going to have a victorious life? No. If you're always dipping and dabbing and stuff and playing the victim, you really think you're going to have a victorious life? The answer is no. But if you're always dipping and dabbing and how to overcome things and accountability and responsibility, and how to sharpen things here and there, and how to become better at this, and how to become better. Now, do you think you're going to start thinking and sounding victorious? The answer is yes. What you do every single day matters for your goal, okay? I wanted to make this sweet and short because I'm hoping that this is important enough for you to start a goal and start appreciating all your victories. I can't express to you how much um, how much damage I hear from people's mouths when it's not good enough. And they, and it's because they, they believe that 
how they got here was in the short term. So the progress should be just as short. That's not true. Your mindset has been developed for years and you're trying to unbreak that in a matter of months or weeks. And so the reason why I'm so patient with myself and, I, and all the loose, I, I wanna tighten up more. And so I just remind myself, you are fat for seven years. You're only fit for three. You have time. And that's exactly how I talk to myself. And anytime I want to get frustrated or anytime I want to complain that I'm last place again in bodybuilding, I just remind myself, you were fat for seven years. You only got three back. Calm down. It works. Because I want to be impatient too. So I hope this helps. Keep your head up. Chase all the victories. Find all the victories. Sound victorious. Speak victories. And you'll see what happens. It, it will change your life, I promise you.